Hello and welcome to my Hack Shack located right here in Los Angeles. My name is Johnny and I support horror. Oh man, this week I watched a uh, quirky little horror movie called Uncle Peckerhead. Whenever you combine metal and punk rock and comedy and horror all rolled into one, I'm a big fan. Deathgasm is one of my favorite movies to watch just for that reason. And if you haven't seen Deathgasm, please put it on your list. Thank me later. But for now, let's talk music, gore, and murder. Uncle Peckerhead is a horror comedy movie written and directed by Matthew John Lawrence. Judy, a passionate and headstrong bassist of the punk rock band Duh, is ready to embark on a mini tour with her bandmates Max and Mel. Only problem is they're a brand new band without much exposure, uh, they keep getting eviction notices, and their tour van has been repossessed the day before they're supposed to go out on tour. Down but not quite out, the band puts flyers on vehicles all over the city asking if they can borrow that car for the tour. Things look bleak. That is until they run into an older gentleman named Peckerhead, or Peck for short. He offers his spacious van and his services for the band throughout their tour. At first, things are moving along smoothly, but it takes a dark and hilarious turn once they realize that Uncle Peckerhead turns into a cannibalistic monster at midnight every night, but just for 13 minutes only. Now the band has to decide, do they move forward with Uncle Peckerhead, who has the only means of transportation and deal with his little midnight problem? Or do they drop him, face being stranded and not being able to make the rest of their shows. You will have to watch and find out, horror fam. Based on the poster and the opening scene, I thought this was going to be a bloodbath throughout. There definitely were some gory scenes. Uh, I think there's three that were pretty gory that I can think of, but other than that, it really wasn't. The filmmakers put more effort into the journey that our bandmates were on, their relationships to one another, and the other wacky characters that they meet along the way. And that was fine by me, because this movie still stood out uh, without all the guts and gore. One thing you'll notice right away, and either you're gonna love it or hate it, is the pacing. I'm not saying this movie is a slow burn, because it's really not, but the overall pacing is a little off-kilter and irregular regular if that makes sense. They'd often hold a beat too long during some dialogue and uh, there'd be times where you think a scene would just be over with, but the camera would just keep rolling. It was a bit strange, but it was perfect in how it matched just how quirky this movie is as well as our characters. I'm not going to say that these were the best actors because they're not, but uh, the cadence and how they talked. Their interesting traits and just how they all meshed together worked well in my opinion. Usually a strange movie like this would just fall flat, but uh, it didn't for me. I wanted to keep watching. So let's get into our characters. Uh, they are definitely the lovable losers type. We have Judy, the bassist, who is uh, the total mom of the group. She's the spunky go-getter that has those uh, annoying little sister vibes, but she gets shit done. And she's the voice of reason for the band. Without her, everything would fall apart. Next, we have Max, the guitarist of the group. Uh, he's an interesting one. Uh, just clueless is all I can say. <laughs> Max is like a funny and clumsy little puppy that follows you around and you can't help but just smile when you look at him. Then we have Mel. Uh, she has those young teenager angsty vibes who just rolls her eyes at everything and always has something dry and witty to say. There's just no fucks given with her, uh, but she's still likable even though she doesn't give a shit. And last but not least, we have Uncle Peckerhead or Peck for short. Starting out, he seemed a little aggressive, but uh, after he agreed to take the band on their tour and be their merch guy, he just turned into the biggest sweetie ever. There is something endearing about his character. Despite his animalistic monster rage and eating people at midnight, he, he was so lovable uh, with his Southern drawl and just extreme politeness. But even throughout the movie, you can see that there's something off about him. He does get attached to the band almost too much, and it does come off slightly Slightly creepy. As for the movie as a whole, I love that they incorporated some silly aspects of punk rock music and metal music. I'm a big fan of both, so uh, it really hit home with me, and maybe I was laughing a little harder at the nods to both of those genres, more than someone who doesn't know anything about the culture. Even if you don't know anything, there's enough silliness there to laugh. Small example, some of the bands that they play with on tour, check out their names. Marshmallow Dicks, Queef Queens, and 
piss face to name a few. There's a great scene in here where they take a friendly jab at metalheads. And when I say metalheads, just people that are obsessed with metal music. But they showed them being incredibly annoying, these metalheads. You know, they're cranking up their metal tunes on their stereo, head banging in the parking lot, slamming beers, over the top moshing. Even what they were wearing was just spot on. All in all, I just appreciated the multiple jabs they took at uh, metal heads and punk rock kids. One thing I noticed they could have added more in this movie is just straight up conflict. It seemed like there was major conflict at the very beginning of this movie when uh, the band's van got repossessed and they had no idea how they're gonna go on this tour. And then at the end, there was another major conflict. I don't wanna reveal what that is, but it just came a little bit too late, you know? Uh, you have these bookends. So you have some conflict at the beginning, conflict at the end, but not so much conflict in the meat of the story. I just believe they could have added a lot more conflict, especially with Uncle Peckerhead eating people at midnight. There was just so much opportunity there for him to mess up their entire tour, uh, but it didn't hinder them, not that much. And again with the gore, I think that uh, a punk rock B comedy horror movie like this could have included a little bit more, especially when the very first frame of this movie has a lot of blood and guts in it. Because I was thinking, oh shit, if this is the open opening scene, this is really setting the bar. But even without the major gore, now don't get me wrong, there's still a little in here. There is some gore, blood and guts, so don't worry. Uh, but even without the major gore, I still like the movie. And the ending was very rushed. It felt like they had to wrap it up quick and just push that conflict that wasn't present in the middle of the story. But having said that, you should still see Uncle Peckerhead. This one has a lot of heart. It's very quirky, offbeat, has some quick gore with some cool practical effects, and it's just full of a dry and witty, silly humor. So if you appreciate a B-movie that has all those traits, definitely give this one a watch. Okay, horror fam, I'm gonna let you go for now. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching this video and all my videos I put on my channel. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, I hope you do so now and give this video a thumbs up if you like it. And let's be friends to the end. You know you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at The Horror Hack. Once again, my name is Johnny. Keep supporting horror and this has been one hack of a show.